Hi everyone, my name is Hassan Jafari, and today we're going to work on chapter 13, Weights. Uh, okay, so but what we're going to learn during this chapter, uh, these are the learning objectives, actually that's written in the beginning of your book, so I'm not going to work on them, but quick, uh, we're going to have a quick review on them, then we're going to learn the transfers and longitudinal weight, and we are going to be familiar with some words like uh, wavelength, amplitude, uh, speed, speed of wave, and intensity, frequency, and so on, and how we can find these parameters, which are really important. Okay, uh, a quick question. What is a wave? That could be, that could be the answer, the answer for a wave. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let me draw it for you. This is a wave. Perfect, okay. Uh, almost good answers. Alright, so what we have here, you can see that as your friend said, there are some particles that are moving up and down, up and down, or maybe they're just vibrating like that. But this is the pattern. They all have the same pattern. Look at this one. If I take this one from here, this pattern is repeated again, repeated again, repeated again. So we just can say that continuous repeating pattern in which the some types of energy, like what, like sound, uh, light, heat, um, or spread or carry, right? There's another definition in your book which says a periodic disturbance traveling through space. Periodic. Periodic means continuous repeat. One period, two period. So periodically, they are changing and repeating. Disturbance traveling. Disturbance means that, for example, when I'm talking now with you guys, right? I'm disturbing the air particles, like air particles are vibrating. I'm actually vibrating the air particles and they hit each other, hit each other and vibrate and they travel to our ears and then we can hear, right? Uh, so this is the definition of wave. Let's move on. This wave has some features. Can you just name some of them? Amplitude, okay, perfect. Wavelength, frequency, Period. Good, good. Crest, trough, speed. Perfect. Yes. Um, but let's play a game here. You just get some of them, right? But let's play a game here. What is this one here? Displacement. Perfect. Displacement. Display. Displacement. Because the particles are moving up and down, they are displacing the particles, right? They are changing their position. How about this one? Look at this one. Two similar points are connected. Period. Okay. Wavelength. Which one? Period or wavelength? We don't know. Okay. We're going to go back on them later on. How about this one? This doesn't look like displacement again, right? Technically, that's a displacement, but it's quite big, right? Bigger than the other ones. So we call them perfect amplitude. Amplitude. All right. How about this line? This line actually had two, three different names that we're gonna learn one of them, but I'm gonna let, let you know. But let's go back here. This one is period or wavelength. You know from IGC physics, right? So what is that? Period, wavelength. What is period? Period is time taken for one complete wave. Time taken for one complete wave. So I need time. Do we have time here? Let's see. This is displacement. We are not talking about that one because this is a horizontal line. So we are talking about the x-axis. So x-axis is distance is not time. So we need to be careful about the, the, the x-axis. What is the base? Is it the time base or it's a distance base? If it's a distance base, that's going to be wavelength. We show it by lambda. If it's time base, we show it, we say period and then we show it by t. So we need to be careful about it. There's another parameter that here we cannot show it. What is that? Yes, frequency. We can't show frequency here, but we know that frequency is number of vibrations or oscillations or waves per unit time. 
number of oscillations per unit time. Perfect. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because we already know that. We know the definition of them. So let's move on. Okay. Here, that's really important. I'm, I'm going to make sure that you guys understood what I said here. Okay. Perfect. So this is a screen. This screen has been taken from an oscilloscope, right? So we have a pure note or a pure uh, way, and we are going to figure out that how much this period is. We are talking about period because here is a time base. Why is that the time base? Because it's saying this device is set on 20 milliseconds per division. What is division? Yes, this is division. One division. This is one division. Okay, so one division is 20 milliseconds per this division, all right? So how much is period? Period, teacher, period is time taken for one complete wave. So what is my job? My first job is to need, is to find the one one wave. Okay, I'm gonna start from here. We can make this job easier. I'm not gonna do this one because I'm not sure that if this is exactly in the middle of this division or not, so let's start from the beginning, right? So I'm going up, down, up. So this is one way, and I count this one as T. It's period, right? So how many divisions do we have? Two divisions, two DIE, right? And we say 20 milliseconds per division. So we have two divisions, so T is gonna be two divisions times 20 milliseconds, and the answer is, uh, 40 milliseconds. 40 milliseconds is period. Perfect. Okay, now I want you to tell me frequency. How much is frequency? Teacher, frequency is the number of vibrations per time, per unit time. Okay, then we can count all of these waves at this time. But here, one wave is going to be enough. If you have time for one wave, that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to write one. Wait, how much time? 40 milliseconds. But I need to convert it to second if I want to find the answer hertz. If I am looking for this unit, hertz, so I need to write 40 second, 40 milliseconds need to be converted to seconds, right? So it's going to be 40 times 10 to the power of minus 3 seconds. So that is our frequency. But look at this. What is weird here? T is 40 milliseconds divided by one wave, but frequency is one wave divided by 40 milliseconds, right? So what is the relationship? We can find something here. We can say frequency is one over T, or T is one over frequency. So if you have one of them, we can find the other one pretty easy. Perfect, I think that's clear for you. Did you understand? Perfect, let's move on. Okay. Here we have one example. I want to make sure that you guys understood it. Okay. Uh, so the question is saying that this figure shows the trace on an oscilloscope screen when sound uh, uh, waves are detected by a micro microphone. The time base. Guys, this point is important. Here, time base. You need to make sure that the, x-axis is based on time or distance. It's set on one millisecond per division. The y gain, y gain is set on 20 millivolts per division. So determine the frequency, how much is frequency, sound waves, and also amplitude. So we're looking for frequency F and amplitude A. So let's find out frequency. Frequency is number of waves, number of vibrations per unit time. So I'm gonna find one wave and I'm going to find its time. So one wave starts from here, goes up, down, here, finish. Okay, perfect. So I have one wave. What's the time? One division, two divisions, three divisions, four divisions. Four DIV. Okay, so frequency, number of waves. How many waves? One wave. What is the time? Four division. DIV. One millisecond per division times one milliseconds. And answer is one over, so it's going to be this millisecond, and I need to convert it to second like that. So times 
10 to the power minus 3. So that was going to be 1000 divided by 4 hertz. How about amplitude? This is amplitude, pretty easy. This is amplitude. We only need to find the undisturbed line, the line that makes uh, two even sides. Top sides and down sides are even. So that's going to be our amplitude. 1, 2, 3, 3.5 DIB. 3.5 DIB. Each DIB, each division is 20 millivolt. Perfect. Amplitude 3.5 DIB times 20 millivolt. That's going to be our amplitude. Perfect, that's it. Uh, this is your homework. That's your homework. Uh, you can find it in your book. Uh, I'm going to write a page. Um, I'm not that sure, but you can find it in your book. Uh, so here, the next part, uh, we are going to work on two different types of waves that we have. We don't have a wave out of these two types. So one of them is longitudinal, another one is transverse wave. Perfect. What is longitudinal and what is transfer? Okay, I'm going to give you the definition of them. So this is a longitudinal wave, this is a transfer wave. So we can see that if you count this line as particles, as the, your medium, so they are vibrating like this, so we can see the direction of wave is on x-axis, and the direction of uh, vibration of the particles is on wave x-axis as well. So they are moving the direction of particles, the direction of vibration of particles, and the direction of your wave is same. They are moving alongside each other. So we call it longitudinal wave. So this is longitudinal wave. Like what? Sound wave. Perfect. Like sound. How about transfer? Transfer is totally opposite. Like uh, the direction of, uh, direction of your wave is on x-axis, but direction of particles is up and down. It's y-axis. Okay? So actually, uh, the direction of particles is normal to the direction of wave, so is a right angle between them. So we call this one transverse waves. Okay? Did you understand? Okay, let's do an example here. So I have a spring here, that's a kind of slinky spring. I'm going to ask my assistant to come here and help me out to understand what the longitudinal and the transverse wave is. So I'm going to first uh, simulate longitudinal wave. So if I have this one, so I'm going to compress it like this compression, compress it, but another part of the wave is ref uh, reflected, so that's refraction. So I'm going to compress them here and release them. One, two, three, ready, you go. You see, wave is going uh, from my side to her side and uh, going and coming back, and the particles are moving like this. Particles, particles are not moving up and down. Particles are moving in the same direction. So this is a longitudinal wave. Another example that I'm going to make a transverse wave. I'm going to use this slinky spring. Uh, so this is a transverse wave. Look at this one. The direction of wave is on the x-axis, but the particles are moving up and down. So this is a transverse wave. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, is that clear? Perfect. You can find this definition in your book. Next part is very important. Phase and phase difference. Guys, imagine A, C, D, B, and I'm going to add another point F. They are particles, right? They are particles. All of these particles reach the maximum points and the minimum points and sometimes zero point, which is an undisturbed line, okay? All of them, they have same pattern, okay? They all, all of them have same pattern, but at, at um, an intended time, at the, um, at the time, they are gonna reach that point and like this highest and the lowest point. But sometimes, one of them is ahead of another one or behind the other one. Like here, C is ahead of A, D is ahead of C, like A is behind C. Okay, so what is happening here? A phase difference is happening between these particles. Phase difference is happening. Sometimes there is no phase difference between them. What does it mean? 
it means that both of those particles are moving up and down at the same time together. Like what? Can you tell me which ones? Like among these points that we have, give me two points that they move up and down together at the same time. Perfect. A and B. That's correct. A and B, look at them, they're moving up and down together, right? So we call these two in phase. They are in phase. In phase means there is no phase difference there. There is no phase difference there. How about C and D? Are they moving up and down together? Of course not. When C is coming down, D is going up, right? So we can say these two are out of phase. There is a phase difference between them. So between these two, there is a phase difference, and we can say they are out of phase. Okay, they are out of phase. In phase, they are here, they are out of phase. But we can uh, measure them in degrees or radian. In degrees or radian. Like what? Imagine a circle. Imagine a circle like this. Okay. And we are going to divide it to four sections. Uh, we are going to divide it into four sections, and from here, so I'm going to name it here. Uh, let me let me put this one, put numbers here. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry, four and five. Okay, one, two, three, four and five. So here is going to be number one, number two, number three, number four, and five. So we can see that if I go and come back again to the same position, if I go and come back to the same position, what, how, how many degrees? How many degrees have I traveled? Exactly, 360 degrees. 360 degrees. Or if I don't move, I'm just there, it's gonna be zero degrees. So we can say if, if the phase difference, phase difference is zero or three hundred sixty degrees, zero or three hundred sixty degrees, then these two points are in phase. In phase. How about uh, point one and two? One and two. These two. 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So, but if, if the phase difference is between, like I'm gonna call it phi, is between zero and 360 degrees, they are out of phase. Out of phase. Doesn't matter, that's gonna be, that's gonna be 359 degrees. Still is out of phase. It's close to be in phase, but still is out of phase based on this equation. But how can we calculate it? There is an equation. There is an equation here which says phi. We want to know the degrees, okay? Phi is x divided by lambda times 360 degrees. Teacher, what is lambda? Wavelengths, perfect. What is x? We don't know. Okay. Guys, x is the horizontal distance between those two points that you want to compare them. Point C and D, this is x. A and C, this is x. A and B, this is x. Okay? So let's consider point A and B. This is x. Okay, how much is x? This is a wavelength, so I can say x is lambda. So phi could be lambda divided by lambda times 360 degrees, which would be 360 degrees. It's this number, so it's in phase. Another point, C and D. C and D, okay, let's put it here, phi for C and D. X, x is this, 
is, from, is lambda divided by 4. So x is lambda divided by 4 divided by lambda times 360 degrees. And the answer is 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is not this number, it's not this number, it's between 0 and 360 degrees. So we say it's out of phase. Okay? That's out of phase. So we have in phase or out of phase. There is one condition. There is one condition that we call it antiphase. Okay. Let's come here. We call it antiphase. Look at this point. Uh, I'm going to call this one C and this point F. Okay. When the point F is at trough and C is crest, okay, when F is here, like, let me do this, when F is here, I'm going to put it F prime, and this is going to be supreme, right? When F is here, C is here, exactly upside down, they are in opposite direction, right? In opposite direction. So we call this situation anti phase guys this is still out of phase out of phase but it has its own special name which is anti phase can you tell me how many degrees is this anti phase how many okay um, your answer is correct is 180 degrees perfect so phi here is 180 degrees so let's uh, use our equation. Phi is x divided by lambda times 360 degrees. How much is x? How much is x here? Half lambda. So I will write half lambda divided by lambda times 360 degrees, which would be 180 degrees. Right? So if your answer is 180 degrees, you can say that's uh, anti phase, which is still out of phase. Uh, that's it. Uh, but maybe you ask that, uh, okay, what if I continue the way, like I go here, I go here, for example, here, this point, and this point. Perfect. It's going to be a multiple of 300, you know, multiple of 360 degrees, right? It means that if I uh, start from point one, go and come back here again, and go and come back here again, that's going to be 720. Right? That's going to be 720 degrees. So if still you have 720 degrees, if your phase difference, if phi is 720 degrees, perfect, that's in phase. Still, that is in phase. Okay? That is in phase. So here, if we just said between 0 and 360 degrees, we were just talking about one complete wave. That's pretty much it. And... Um, I hope you understood what I said, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, and have a good day.